The Anaheim Ducks had a horrible start to the season last year. Just horrible. They were one of the last place teams in the NHL after the first two months of the season. And nobody expected them to rebound to make the playoffs. But they did. They were one of the best teams in the second half of the season. Probably only behind the Pittsburgh Penguins. And they ended up making the playoffs. But they got ousted by the Nashville Predators in the first round in seven games. Ending Bruce Boudreaux's tenure as head coach of the Ducks. Now Boudreaux getting fired. Do I agree with that decision? Yes. He's had no playoff success with this team. Okay, they made it to the third round, but look at the team. The team is so good. They should have won they should be winning a Stanley Cup. They this is a team that can win a Stanley Cup. They got so much depth. They got great goaltending. They have good young defensemen and a solid forward group. They can win a Stanley Cup. And Bruce Brudeau wasn't getting it done, so he got out of there. Their replacement, though, is where I really disagree with their decision. They hired Randy Carlisle. And this is coming from a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. I watched Randy Carlisle coach this team for I think it was like three and a half years. His style of play is outdated. He plays a run and gun type of style. Offense first, defense second. That's not what the Anaheim Ducks need. The Anaheim Ducks are known to be an amazing two-way team. This is not what the Anaheim Ducks are. Is a, they're not a run and gun type of team. They can't be. And that's what Randy Carlisle is probably going to implement. And if he tries to implement a new style to his coaching, it's not going to be that great. Some coaches have a style of play that they're just good at. And Randy Carlisle is good at having a run and gun type of style. Sadly, the NHL isn't a run and gun type of league anymore which is why I so much disagree with this, this decision to hire Randy Carlisle as the coach. Then the Ducks traded goaltender Frederick Anderson to the Toronto Maple Leafs in return for the 30th overall pick in this year's NHL entry draft, originally owned by Pittsburgh, the Leafs got in the Phil Kessel trade, and a second round pick in next year's NHL entry draft. And I think this trade is good for both teams. Anaheim got what they needed. They needed cap relief. They couldn't afford to keep two starting goaltenders, so they traded one away. The Leafs needed a starting goaltender badly. Trust me, Jonathan Bernier is not the right goalie to be a starting goaltender. And they will be happy with the acquisition of Frederick Anderson. Now looking ahead to the draft, the Ducks do hold the 24th overall selection. And it's way too tough, like I always say now, to tell who is and who isn't going to be available. Guys will get picked in the first round who aren't supposed to be getting picked till the second round. And guys will drop who is supposed to get picked in maybe the top 15. They could be dropping to the 24th or 23rd overall selection. So you never know. All I can say is the Anaheim Ducks should be drafting a forward. Their prospect pool is just stacked with defensemen. And John Gibson looks like the starting goalie in Anaheim for the foreseeable future. So I say draft a forward. A 24th overall pick, a forward can still turn out to be a middle of the pack forward. Maybe even a top 6 forward if they get lucky. Now if you're wondering why the Ducks had to trade away Frederick Anderson for some cap relief, look no further than their pending RFAs, Vatanen, Lindholm, and Raquel. Those three guys alone are probably going to cost you maybe just a little bit over $10 million a season. So that's why they had to trade Anderson because if they had to re-sign Anderson as well, they probably don't sign one of those two top defensemen. Maybe they leave Raquel out and they can maybe afford those two top defensemen if you keep Anderson. But I just, I don't, I could not see them signing those three guys with Anderson, which is why I think trading away is still a smart decision. Like I said earlier, now they can probably afford to keep Vatten and Raquel and Lindholm. Three important guys to their future. Now looking at the pending UFAs the Ducks have, the three big ones are David Perron, Jamie McGinn, and Chris Stewart. I don't believe they're going to be re-signing David Perron or Chris Stewart. I would pretty much assume both of those guys are going to hit the free agent market. But Jamie McGinn, the cap has been raised from $71 million to $73 million next season. I think that extra $2 million might just be enough for the Anaheim Ducks to say, okay, we can squeeze you in there somewhere in the cap. Because McGinn was a very effective player for the Ducks last year, especially in the playoffs. I know they would love to keep him around. And I think that two extra million dollars the cap is going to give him next season might just be enough for the Ducks to keep him around for another season or two. So I think the key to the Anaheim Ducks offseason is to re-sign those three big RFAs, Lynn Holm, Vatten, and Raquel, and implement in Randy Carlisle's head that this team needs to continue to be a dominant two-way team. Just look at your top two centers. Ryan Getzlaff and Ryan Kessler. Those two centermen might be in the top 10 best two-way centermen in the entire NHL. Those are two centermen that you can win a Stanley Cup with. You've already won one with, Stan with um, Ryan Getzlaff. You haven't won, with won one with Ryan Kessler, but he's been to the Stanley Cup final with the Vancouver Canucks. These are two guys you can win with. And you had Corey Perry, who's not a bad two-way player at all in there. And you can develop some of your younger players to be good two-way players, plus a great defensive core with guys like Fowler, keeping Lindholm and Vatten in. That's a good young defensive group that you're going to have for years to come. And a solid goalie with John Gibson. 
this team needs to continue to be an amazing two-way team and they can maybe win a Stanley Cup. So thank you guys for watching my video on the Anaheim Ducks. I apologize that the cuts are really spread out in this video. They probably will be for the next few videos. That's really just because exams are happening right now and I gotta study, but I wanna get these last six or seven videos out before the draft begins tomorrow night, which is June 24th. So that's why I can't do small cuts because it takes too long to edit and too long to film. So the rest of the videos will probably be like this. I hope they're not too bad. I know they're not perfect, but I apologize. Anyway, guys, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. It would mean so much to me. Please like my page on Facebook. It's all about hockey. It's called The Hockey Gods. The link to it is down below. And please email me any questions. Or if you just want to talk hockey, to theshannonclan19 at gmail.com. And I'll see you guys back here for the next video.